CIG have just dropped the biggest insight into Star Citizen of the last few years. They've shown us how they plan to create a living, breathing universe, how the AI will literally evolve, and how dynamic events like Xenothreat will fit into all of it. Tony Zurovic, Star Citizen's Director of Persistent Universe, spent 40 minutes showing us the game's inner workings. And whilst I've started off with a short section on the key points from that video, you'll want to stick around to see how they're going to deliver it all, and how we'll see all this stuff come online. It's no secret that the contract or mission system in Star Citizen is painfully static. Play for any length of time, and you'll know exactly what contracts you can pick up, from where or from whom. And this was always going to be replaced, and now we have more detail as to how that's going to happen. Quantum is the name for a separate simulation of the Persistent Universe. It's separate to the game, but it plugs into all the back-end services, pulling data from all of those game servers and us players, as well as thousands of simulated AI. These AI are called Quanta, and they act just like players do, finding jobs, earning credits, and spending them basically to survive. This creates patterns of life and a real working economy that drives what we'll encounter in the game, from figuring out what supplies are in demand and therefore how to make money trading, to areas of higher piracy, and even the type and how many ships you'll encounter and the cargo they'll carry, and the types of contract on offer in any one space. Quantum simulates it all and then pushes that info in through to the game servers for us to experience. And this stops the game servers having to work all that out as well, meaning that the servers will perform better. Quanta AI will be randomly generated in terms of what jobs they can do and how likely they are to take risks, leading to gaps in the market that we'll be able to exploit and a constantly shifting set of events. So that means we'll have two types of AI in the game. The subsumption AI being the guys and girls that you see walking around all the stations and planets, and the quanta AI that is simulated in the back-end simulation that only appear in the game as we're travelling through an area because it'll tell them what we'll encounter. Virtual AI, or what they're going to call virtual NPCs, VMPCs, bridge the gap between the two. These AI, like the Quanta stuff, will appear when you get close, but they don't get deleted out of existence when no players are nearby. They'll become simulated and continue to develop their own lives. Their actions are tracked, their current stats recorded, and they can go on to be NPCs that give missions or become famous or infamous. When you put all this information together, it will trigger dynamic events, giving us handcrafted content that will be blended together. Things like blockades, mass criminal activity, and even invasions of entire systems. Initially, just like Xenothreat was, they'll be triggered by the devs, but later on the quantum simulation will do this dynamically in response to what is happening across the servers, and maybe use some VMPCs that we've come across to become the main personalities in that event. Just before we look at all of this stuff in a bit more detail, if you're watching this on the day this video is released, be sure to stick around for details of my first community event. It's going to be a massive outpost defence land assault that I'd really like you to come and be a part of. One of the things that really caught my eye about the quantum simulation and the quanta AI that I'll be using is how they're going to make all those AI slightly different. And it breaks up into two categories, proficiencies, the sort of job skills that they're going to have, and traits, how they feel about doing certain things. So initially for professions, for their jobs that they can do, we're going to get combat, manufacturing, science, and tradesmen, which I assume to be kind of like buying and selling and cargo hauling. The traits, we're going to have aggression, morality, intelligence, and ambition. The one that catches my eye in that list is morality. Because you can have a system that is mainly law-abiding, but as maybe the work dries up, things get bad there, you can have a lot of quanta go, well, I was law-abiding, but now it's going to be more beneficial for me to become a pirate, to become a criminal, 
uh, and feed my family that way. And I really like that idea that you can have previously law-abiding systems become absolute cesspools because they're not being supplied correctly. Odin is a piece of software that they're developing alongside Quantum. And what it is effectively, it's a visual representation of all the data that Quantum is processing. Now what you can see here is information about commodities. It's their prices, how much is being produced, how much is being consumed. What I like about this, if you've ever been to Lawville in the central business district where Constantine Houston gives out that mission, those screens in the central business district, they all have these stock kind of just like images on them of stock prices and resource prices and all that sort of trade gubbins that you would see on a stock market floor, right? Potentially, this information that Odin's taken could be fed into those so that what we get in the future is real-time information of the prices of different materials and those sorts of trade hubs like the kind of trade development center in area 18 would be places that people who are commercially focused or the traders the cargo runners they're going to spend a lot of time in there trying to identify where goods are shooting up in price before those notifications are sent to players so they can get ahead of the curve and make some really big bucks because yeah price alerts coming to your journal that's going to be a thing with quanta too <laughs> this graph is just Tony Zurevic genius. This is how they're plotting the quality of their contracts. Each of the circles is one of the contracts that the game offers. Now, as you move from left to right, the further right you go, the more times that those who complete the mission are successful at it. As you go from bottom to top, it's how many times that mission is completed, regardless of whether you're successful or you fail. So basically, bottom left, very few people are trying it and as they do try it they are not successful top right means everyone's completing the mission but maybe it's too easy because everyone is being successful what they're aiming for as you'll see in a second is a strip in the top center everyone that has a go at it is completing it meaning it's good enough to hold people's attention but it's not so easy that people complete it every time it's enough of a challenge that you'll want to go back and try again. What's really interesting is they look to be able to teach the quantum simulation and the quantum AI some fairly technical bits and pieces. For example, he's shown an example of quanta AI exploring, discovering mineral, no mineral nodes, and then transmitting that to other AI and potentially to players, and even talked about selling that as data information. You data runner guys, take note. There are also challenges to it, and you, I think we're going to see this as more gameplay loops are added. Things like teaching the AI to understand what a fuel is, what sort of fuel prices there are going to be, and fuel economy. So it can cleverly set the prices for quantum and hydrogen fuel, and so on and so forth. It also needs to understand damage states, because we're not going to want to find AI who are always in a pristine ship. If you're concerned about kind of server performance and how all of this AI is going to affect gameplay and the server resources, virtual AI is for you. Now, we have Subsumption AI in the game. Forget the silly name, Subsumption AI is the AI that you can see when you play. They're the guys and girls that are stood at landing zones and in stations, the ones you fight and the ones that fight you. Now, to have the 100,000 AI that Tony says we need to properly simulate Stanton, all represented in the game, all in ships that are rendered, all walking around all of the time, clearly that's not going to work. The server resources just aren't going to hold up to a strain like that. That's why we have the Quanta AI. These are the AI that are working in the background, not directly connected to the game servers, but they're what will be generated in, they'll appear, the game will give them an identity, you'll interact with them or not, depending on how, what you choose to do and how they've been spawned in. And then when you leave, that identity disappears, is, is destroyed, and just the generic AI remains. This means that they can simulate the entire universe and what the AI are doing without having to render them in the game all the time. What virtual NPCs do, the virtual AI, is they bridge the gap between the two. So they can appear when we're moving through a space and interact with us or not. 
but when they disappear, they retain their identity and they retain everything they've done and continue to be simulated, very similar to the Quanta AI, to reappear again the next time a player encounters them. Now, these NPCs, they're going to have their actions and location tracked. Their crime stats, wealth, what ship they're in, any damage they've taken, cargo, even how they prefer to spend their money, all of this will be recorded to effectively develop their own backstory. They could go on to do things like recruiting followers, even become a mission-giving NPC, even working the way up to be a crime boss or head of a mercenary firm or a shipping magnate. So that NPC that kills you isn't just going to disappear into the ether. The chances are they will be a VNPC that you'll be able to track down, you'll be able to learn their motions. They even talk about, you know, kind of this NPC that they're talking about goes to Yeller a lot, so the player sets up a quantum interdiction field and tries to get some revenge. Alternatively, if it were you, you could head to their favourite haunt, wait until they were drunk in the bar, walk up behind them, shiv them, hide their body, and hope to God that the law enforcement guys don't catch up with you. They will trigger the probability volumes of the game. These are spaces that read quantum, read what's going on, and then figure how likely you are to encounter certain types of mission or activity without players needing to be present. It's interesting, because you could have a very rich, law-abiding uh, VMPC, encounter pirates, be taken hostage, and maybe there's a rescue mission needed, or they're ransomed back for huge amounts of money. There are huge gameplay implications, as well as those performance implications. Being able to switch from very lightweight, very resource light AI, to something that you can encounter and interact with in the verse, to then go back to being lightweight without needing to render 100,000 AI all the damn time. Um, for me, the dynamic events part of Tony's speech was... <sighs> there weren't many surprises in there. We knew they were going to add more. We knew they were going to become more dynamic and more blended. What it did do is it explained something that I couldn't quite get. There's bits on the progress tracker about AI behaviours and, and programming in like people cleaning and people surrendering and it's like well does that need an entire line all by itself other than to kind of give us an indication of what they're working on and what i've realized is is just how clever that's actually being and building things right if you imagine um they add a line to the progress tracker about um people being ill one of the dynamic events could be that there is an illness sweeping the system the dynamic event becomes right we need to we need medical gameplay here we need people to bring in medical supplies maybe there's a particular antibiotic they need in order to combat this incredibly rare disease and it means that when you go to that location if they've fleshed out the idea of people being ill rather than rocking up and people are walking around and you know sitting down and leaning on railings looking at nothing in particular what you could see is people coughing, people lying on the street being very unwell. You go to hospitals and there are voice lines and people running around all over the place saying how short staff they are because most of their staff are working in the big, um, you know, quarantine facilities. Just having that massive library of those sorts of behaviours available to them is going to mean that they can blend so well into, you know, dynamic events and lack of medical supplies as a general behavior for NPCs. Now, not only do you just have a mission, you go there and you deliver it and nothing really changes, you can go there and see that people are ill, you know, AI, albeit AI, uh, are, are unwell and the whole place will change. Maybe they have kind of different textures for things being generally dirty and grime, grimier because work isn't being done by the AI. Uh, maybe the person that you contact in ATC is coughing like a mad thing because they're unwell, but someone needs to man the spaceport so they can get these supplies in. It kind of puts those work lines in a whole new light. I just hope it's working like I've guessed it has. And that all sounds great, but it all seems just a little far off. So here's some concrete information they gave us on what they've done so far to make all this a reality. Tony out and out said that iCache is largely complete. 
meaning that many of the team working on that are now moving to Quantum, and he said the team has doubled already in size. Work has started on the MPC scheduler and an ATC service, air traffic control service, required for server meshing. The Quantum simulation has been rewritten in the c -sharp programming language, meaning that the number of AI it can control has gone from just under 10,000 to over 1 million without having to make any other changes to the system. And to put that in perspective, Tony reckons that Stanton will require roughly 100,000 AI to simulate properly. Quantum's going to start by simulating fuel and repair prices that we see in the verse. It's also going to look at the levels and types of piracy that we see, and maybe, I suppose depending on how well that goes, the freighters and security levels. It's also going to take over pretty quickly for generating service beacons that we see as parts of missions. Our first look at the Virtual AI, or VNPC system, will come with Bounty Hunting version 2, which will start to be worked on in quarter 1, 2022. And this bit will come as no surprise after Xenothreat, but they are working on a whole bunch of dynamic events for this year and next, with the first slated to be the Nine Tails lockdown, and that was from one of Tony's own spoilers in a previous Star Citizen video. Now, none of this is meant to take away from Tony's video. I've linked it in the description, honestly, go watch it. If normal YouTube content is on like a TV level, then his presentation, honestly, is on a, you know, third year degree lecture quality. It's There's loads of stuff in there, more detail than you could hope for. It's really, really good. And I'd be really interested to know what the highlight of that was for you guys. You've got my thoughts. I'd love to know what you think, which bit really, really stood out for you, or which feature you're most excited about, or the bit that just blows your mind. Let me know down in the comments. My very first community event is going to be a massive land assault on an outpost. We're hoping to take up an entire server for some 25v25 action. It's going to happen about 24 hours after this video goes live on the 26th of May, at 1900 UTC. Park your tune somewhere near Port Trestle or New Babbage and make sure you've rented a Starlifter and a Tonk from the Expo. They'll be free to take. Join the DGP Discord using the link in the description below. Don't worry, you won't have to talk if you don't want to. You just need to be able to hear what's going on. If you want to record your own footage and send me a link to it, I might well use it in a future video. I'd love to be out of game with some of you guys. You've been watching Drinkers with Gaming Problems. Thank you very much for stopping by. I'll see you soon.